What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to get back into the Ableton Audio Effect videos and um, today I want to talk about the Spectrum. So real quick, the Spectrum, quick disclaimer, it's not going to make any fucking difference in your mix. It's not going to change any sound by any means. All right, it's purely for a visual representation of what's happening with a particular sound or if you want to see how your entire mix looks. So right now I have this on the master channel on this techno track I'm working on. Um, so I brought it in and it's going to look like this. And yes, I do have a vengeance kick up there for this because I found that vengeance kicks actually are pretty good for techno tracks. Um, so I'm going to click this button. It's going to bring me to this view. So this is going to look like the EQ8 view. And real quick, these numbers on the side are the, it's the volume in decibels. So it goes from negative whatever all the way up to, I think, positive 36. And you can see 100 hertz, 1000 hertz, 10,000 kilohertz, whatever. Um, so this is basically the same view as an EQ3. Um, I'm going to change the blocks to 16,000, and that's just going to change the sampling rate and make it a little bit more accurate. Um, the 8100 is fine. I just, it's like OCD. I just put it on 16,000. So you could do this on either just the right channel, just the left channel, or the left and right. I leave it on the left and right unless I have something panned all the way to one side. Um, if I have like one type of hi-hat panned to the left and a different type of hi-hat panned to the right, I'll um, check each one individually. Um, so the refresh is the amount of seconds or milliseconds time that it's refreshing this um, signal. So I'm just going to play it and show you real quick. I just leave it at 60 milliseconds, it's fine. So the average, um, I don't know the specific or technical term for this, but you'll see that the higher it goes, the um, less accurate the reading is and the slower the response is. So I like to leave it at one, but I'll show you what happens when I move it up to eight. Just real quick, you guys could see just from looking at this, there needs to be a lot of mixing and mastering. I'm not really quite even within my spectrum. When you are making a mix, you want it from 100 and over. You want it pretty even, maybe a little dip off at the very high ends, but you want it pretty even. And you can see how I have a nice slope, which is technically not really a nice slope. But also, once the hi-hats do come in, it's going to fill up a lot of the spectrum over here. But that's just for another video. I'll talk about mixing and filling up space and stuff in another tutorial. So for the graph, you can have it online or you can have it on bins. And you'll see, uh, some people like it like this. You'll see how um, it looks way different. All right, just leave it online. And the max. Um, the max is this. This is the, the peak volume of every single frequency throughout the entire range. So once I turn the max off, that goes away. All right, I leave this on log also because this is just the best representation of the entire spectrum. Um, if I go to ST, you're going to see instead of it going by hertz, it's going to go by octaves. You can see C1, C2, C3. And linear or line, it's just all fucked up. I don't like to even touch that. So. Um, I also, for this, I like to leave this on auto, but sometimes um, I do change it. So this is basically setting the range. So as you can see, I have it down to negative 188 and then plus 8 up here. But this is, on auto, it's going to just follow where the volume is on the track. But if I want to set it to a certain range... Like that's a very small range, so you really only see the kick coming through. All right, and that's pretty much it, guys. This is purely for mixing and uh, just learning what every sound is doing. And um, if you just put this on every sound, if you're a new producer, and see what type of um, frequencies each sound takes up, it's just going to help you with mixing and production in general. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Oh, also real quick, if you do put like a kick that's soloed in here and you see 
that the peak is like right here. Let's just say for instance, this was the kick. Uh, the kick usually would probably be over here, but let's just say this is the kick because it's a nice point. You can see over here, it's going to say D2. So you can know that the kick is in the key of D. Um, that's just a very helpful and useful way to find out what key um, kicks are in. And you can do it with claps if you want to get really technical uh, and have like everything within the same key. Um, you can do that as well. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel. I'm just about 100 subscribers. Um, so I'll see you guys next time.